This year, you undoubtedly seen Porsche's promotion of the 60-year anniversary of being in the United States. And uh, if you've seen the uh, press releases and followed their website, you've no doubt seen this particular car. And perhaps the gentleman who owns the car got a great story behind it. And it's here at the LA Auto Show. Uh, they showed a connection between the 356 and the modern Porsches that are being built today. We're here with Dick Brummy. Uh, Dick, um, this car actually came all the way from Annapolis, Maryland and uh, looks like it arrived nice and, and safe and I'm sure that uh, you're happy to see it here in the condition that it's in. Uh, what condition was it in when you actually got it? Uh, when we got the car it had been in a wreck in 1967, 1968 and put away in a garage in Annapolis and left there until until about 2000, uh, 99, 2000 and then at that point it was shipped to Ohio to Lowell Civy to restore and he went to work on it and then I the uh, gentleman that owned the car was in his 80s he got shipped to Korea with his wife they were going to be there for three years he said he just couldn't handle the restoration of that car and told Lowell to sell it Lowell called me we bought the car and he started work diligently in uh, 2003 and uh, it was finished September of 2010 now you've raced uh, three, had three of these sixes for a while. You've done their career at Panamericana re recreation. Um, were you looking for a car like this, or you just happened to find out about it and decided what would be a neat project to do? Well, I kind of knew about this car for a long time. I have a 61 Roadster, the Black Roadster, as you know. And in the process of having that restored by Lowell Civy, there was a piece that needed chromed. Someone gave me the name of a gentleman that ran a body shop in Ashton area, and I wish I knew his name today. But he said, uh, go to uh, Franklin Plating in Philadelphia, they're the best. He said, what are you restoring? I said, a 61 Roadster. He says, oh, I had the third convertible that Porsche ever built when I was a student at the University of Maryland in the early 60s. I said, well, what'd you do with it? He said, I sold it to guy and his sons in Annapolis. I said, that's interesting. I didn't really care about it. I had no interest in pre-A's at the time, which is what they call this, the pre-A with the split windshield. So um, fast forward, we were getting the car ready to go to La Carrera, Pan America, in Mexico. And um, we were working on the car at a friend's garage in Annapolis, and had the door open. And one evening, a gentleman came walking up the driveway and said, I've got one of those Porsches. I said, what do you have? He says, I got the third convertible that Porsche ever made. I says, where'd you get that? He says, I bought it from a student at the University of Maryland. Ah, so it's following me. I said, all right, well, what are you going to do with it? He said, well, I want to get it fixed. I gave him Lowell Civy's name. That's how Lowell got the car, and then eventually it seemed like it was destined to be mine. Well, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, with, with the, for those who don't know, the, uh, the pre-A's are the earliest, earliest of 356's. And, you know, the factory uh, was doing things handmade back then and uh, try to keep records as best they can. But you said your Cardex, what does your Cardex say? The Cardex is, of course, like the birth certificate for the car. What does it say? It the only thing on the Cardex is the serial number. There's nothing else on there. Uh, I talked to Porsche about this and Dr. Landenberger at Porsche, he said he talked to even Reuter, who was a coach builder, because these started out as coupes, and they gave Reuter five coupes to make into Cabriolets. Mine was the third one, this is the third one. And they said Reuter had nothing on it besides the serial number. So it, the car is kind of a mystery car. How it got here, we don't really know. There's a rumor that it belonged to Phil Hill, was maybe given to Phil Hill by Porsche. That's a rumor. I talked to Phil Hill's office, they said, Mr. Hill had a lot of cars in his life. He loved Porsches. It's very possible it was his, and if you want to say it was, we won't deny it. So, there you go. Was there anything in particular that you found unique to this car that you might not have seen on other pre-A's? Well, Lowell Civy, who did the work, and he does beautiful work, he saw a lot of things. He pulled his hair out. He went crazy over this car. He, I had to beg him to go back to work on it a couple times, but there are things like this top is all exposed, the frames, there's no headliner in the convertible top, and it's all chrome plated. That's the way it came from Porsche. The mirror there, no one's ever seen an interior mirror like that, which is an interior light as well as rear view mirror. No one's ever seen that. Um, and a lot of other little features that Lowell had never seen before either. And, and he's done, he has done several pre-A's. 
Jack, Jack, we did a story on the uh, new Speedster out, uh, out in the showroom, and it has a very close blue. What's the name of this blue? Well, they Porsche copied that off of my car. This is Adria Blue. No, it was strictly coincidental. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it would be a perfect match to, uh, to two park next to each other and say uh, how far they've come, but you know how how similar it still is. Um, do, you, do you ever get to drive this car? Um, right now, the way it's set up, I can't get in it to drive it. The seats have a, what's called a, a, a recliner recliner system, and it doesn't come back far enough. They did away with that after the first year, but that was the original seat. We're making new seats so that I can drive it if I have to. But it's, I don't really foresee me driving it very often. It's almost like a, a, a work of art, especially how it's situated here in the uh, Porsche display because it's the first thing that you see when you walk in. So it kind of lets people know that Porsche hasn't forgotten their, their heritage and where they came from. Um, so I'm sure you're going to have a lot of, uh, you're going to be smiling a lot tomorrow when you see the people come in and taking a look at the, this car and seeing about how far Porsche has gone and what neat cars they built back in the uh, 50s. Yes, yeah. Can you imagine driving this around town and parking it in a grocery store and leaving it? No, I, I can't do that. A little bit of hair I have left would be gone completely. But there you go. Yet another great thing to see here at the LA Auto Show.